Shout out to Sakurako for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing myself into Disney movies. Many of you have been requesting I do this again, and I had a lot of fun with the first video, so I'm happy to do it again. I don't have much else to say, so let's see what movie I'm drawing myself into first. So you are seeing the cartoon Phineas and Ferb on screen, and you might be thinking, Phineas and Ferb is an animated TV show, not a movie. Well, there are actually multiple Phineas and Ferb movies, and I've decided to draw myself into the most recent one, Candace Against the Universe. So I'm going to draw myself into this group scene. For my base, I'm going to take Vanessa from the scene and plop her into this one I'm drawing myself into. Also, I wasn't sure how tall to make Vanessa in the screenshot, so I found this height chart online, and Vanessa is the same height as Doofenshmirtz, so I made Vanessa be as tall as him. If you've never seen me do this before, I like to use pre-existing characters as a base so I can match in with the style as accurately as possible. In other video series, like my Turning Myself Into Video Game Characters series, I do try to match other styles from scratch, and I can often make them look pretty convincing. However, if you look closely, you can tell that my style comes through, especially if you do a side-by-side -side comparison between the styles. So to make it so my style does not come through like at all, I try to limit myself by using characters as a base. So I've been drawing over Vanessa, and at first I gave myself normal eyes, but then when I went to add my glasses, I was like, wait, how do they draw glasses in Phineas and Ferb? So when I googled some pictures, I found that the characters with glasses don't really have normal eyes. The glasses kind of become their eyes. Uh, so I brought in this picture of Candace to reference, but I actually ended up going with glasses like Irving's. I liked the super round shape, so I went with those instead. But yeah, I thought it was kind of funny how my eyes become the glasses. But I feel like it kind of captures my personality. <laughs> For the rest of my outfit, I'm drawing myself in my usual teal sweater with a collar. For my pose, Vanessa only makes this pose while she's talking and holds it for just a few frames. When I saw her make this pose, I was like, ooh, that could work. It took a few tries for me to capture the pose at just the right moment. Her pose looked a bit unsure or nervous, and I'm a nervous person, so I felt like it would work well for me. Also, I changed the shoes into just normal shoes. She was wearing high heels, but I can't walk in heels, so I wouldn't wear those. I pretty much always just wear flat shoes. Now that my sketch is done, I'll work on the line art. When I was looking through a list of Disney movies and the Phineas and Ferb movie popped up, I instantly wanted to draw myself into it because Phineas and Ferb is one of my all-time favorite cartoons. I remember the first episode previewed alongside High School Musical 2 on Disney Channel. I was a huge High School Musical fan. I remember being so excited to watch 2. I was like 11 years old, so I was squealing and jumping around with excitement. <laughs> I remember watching Phineas and Ferb for the first time, and the first time I saw it, I thought it was good, but I didn't become a true fan of it until it officially aired when Disney did the Phineas and February event, and they played a ton of the new episodes. The humor is just so funny, and I love the characters. The show still really entertains me. Sometimes my little brother Jack will want to watch it, and I'll, I'll be happy when he wants to watch it because I like Phineas and Ferb. Uh, one day I was on Disney Plus, and out of the blue there was a new Phineas and Ferb movie, and I was so happy because I've missed the show a lot. Honestly, I hope they're able to make another movie or something because I want more content. So after the line art, I fill it in with the base colors. This scene didn't have any shading, so this part went by pretty quickly. However, one part that was a bit tricky was deciding where to change the color of my line art. If you look closely at the line art, you can see that it's different colors. And I was looking at different characters to get an idea of where I need to change my line art color. It's pretty consistent that the line art around the skin is a different color, but for the clothes, sometimes it's a different color, but most of the time it's black, it seems. I kind of just kept trying different things until it felt right. Here's me in Phineas and Ferb. It was a lot of fun drawing in the style of the show. And like I said, I really love Phineas and Ferb, so I really enjoy doing this. Next, I'll draw myself into another movie. 
But first, I want to thank Sakuriko for sponsoring this video. Experience Japanese traditional tea time and taste the delightful traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks with Sakuriko. It is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box that personally curates and provides authentic Japanese sweets, snacks, tea, one kitchenware, and more from local makers in Japan every month delivered straight to your door. This month's theme is Sakura Afternoon Tea. Afraid of not knowing what the snacks in the box are? Don't worry, Sakura Co. provides a booklet explaining every snack included in the box. There is also tons of information about Japanese culture. I found the information about different kinds of cherry blossom trees to be very interesting. I didn't know that there were white cherry blossom trees. I also found the section about the history of Oyatsu to be intriguing. Also in the booklet, you can find photo contest info. If you enter, you have a chance to win prizes. This box is filled with so many fun items. I found two items in the box to be very interesting. The first one is this Sakura Jelly. I have never seen something like this before. This refreshing and elegant exclusive Japanese jelly is filled with cherry blossoms and cherry blossom flavor. Enjoy the flavors of the spring season in this spring treat that is perfect for sharing. I think it's really cool that you can see real cherry blossom petals in the jelly. The second item I think is really neat is the peach jelly. Upon opening the package, you'll be greeted with an aroma of fresh peaches, filled with peach pulp giving it an unforgettable texture. The refreshing flavor of this Japanese peach jelly from renowned jelly makers Morihaku is not to be missed. One of my favorite foods in this box was the Sakura Sweet Bread. Tokyo Bread and Sakura Co. have worked hard together to bring you this exclusive bread, experimenting with many recipes until they could find the perfect balance of Sakura flavor and color. And I have to say they nailed it. This bread is so sweet, soft, and yummy. It has a very lovely and light Sakura flavor. Also, the color is super cute. I also really like the Gion no Sato Matcha Cookie. This confection is highly popular in Kyoto. The crispy base holds a sweet Yuji Matcha cream inside. I love the combination of the bitter matcha and sweet cream. It's a very lovely balance. Like I mentioned, we also get a kitchenware item. I think this is so neat. I got this super cute Sakura glass. The pattern on the glass is so pretty and adorable. I love it so much. My family and I always love trying the snacks in the Sakura Co. boxes. It's always such a fun experience and we like trying all the yummy snacks together. And my siblings are always excited when I get a new box. <laughs> also, Sakura Co. boxes are always ordered in the preceding month. This is the March Sakura Co. box. So if you'd like to receive this box to enjoy your own afternoon tea and Hanami picnic at home, make sure to subscribe before the end of February. Also, use the code LOVE to get $5 off your first order using the link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you so much again to Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. Okay, now back to drawing. So the second movie I'm drawing myself into is Winnie the Pooh. This is the newer movie that came out in 2011. Oh wow, I didn't think it'd be that old. <laughs> it felt like it didn't come out that long ago. Um, so I guess it's not that new, but compared to the first movie, it's pretty new, I guess. Um, so I'm going to draw myself into this scene, and for my base, I am taking two different pictures of Christopher Robin to make a new base. I liked how he was standing in one pose, but I liked his head in another one. Uh, so I kind of mushed them together. So I think Christopher Robin is like five or six years old. Because of this, I'm going to draw myself how I looked when I was five or six. I'll see if I can find any old pictures to put up on screen, but when I was young, I had bangs. My hair was pretty long and was a lighter brown and I didn't have glasses yet even though I needed them. <laughs> we didn't know I needed glasses at the time. Also, since Christopher Robin is wearing a sort of uniform, I thought I would draw myself wearing something similar. I decided to draw myself into the new Winnie the Pooh movie instead of the old one because Christopher Robin is so cute in the new one. He's so adorable. His design is much simpler in the old movie. It still has a charm about it, but I really like the new style in the new movie. I think he looks really cute. And I also like how much expression he has. For my left hand in the drawing, I was thinking about keeping it down by my side like the base had it, but I felt like it looked a little bit weird, so I decided to draw it into a different pose. I decided to bring it up kind of like the right hand so they kind of match. 
According to my siblings, I tend to stand like this. They call it my T-Rex pose. Apparently, I especially do it if I'm like tired or going to bed. <laughs> but I also just kind of stand like this for some reason. So now we are on to the line art. When I draw myself into anime scenes, I use a pen that doesn't vary in width because a lot of times the anime line art is all the same thickness. However, in this case, I could see variation in the line art when I was studying it. So I'm going to try to add variation in how thin or thick I make my line art. When I was a toddler, I loved Winnie the Pooh like a ton. I had the first movie on VHS and my parents said I watched that movie so many times that it wore out the film and broke, so they had to buy me a new one. <laughs> For my second birthday, my parents got me a huge Winnie the Pooh. Well, he felt very huge at the time. He was like as big as me. I still have him. He's away in storage somewhere. I sometimes want to put him on my bed with all my other plushies, but he is kind of large. Uh, so I don't put him there. I really wish we would get more Winnie the Pooh animations. Back in the day, we had the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh and we would often get new movies but we hardly get Winnie the Pooh content now. I think the newest thing we got was the Christopher Robin movie. I did watch it and it was cute, but I still want another animated movie. So after line art, it's time for the colors. Once again, there is no shading, so this part went pretty fast. I just filled things in with color. However, I did decide to make my hair color darker. I thought it was pretty light when I was a kid, but then when I found more pictures of myself around five or six, my hair was fairly dark. I was originally kind of thinking of my hair color when I was like two or three, but once I was five or six, it did get a bit darker. I kind of look like Christopher Robin's twin sister or something. <laughs> so here's me in Winnie the Pooh. I felt very nostalgic while working on this one, and now I want to go watch Winnie the Pooh movies. <laughs> So this last movie is very different from anything I've done before. I only ever draw myself into 2D animations because I draw in 2D, I don't work in 3D. Many of you request 3D movies like Tangled and Frozen, and when I would see those suggestions, I would think it's not possible for me to draw myself in 3D. But then I kind of started to question if maybe I could do it. I've been kind of obsessed with Encanto recently, so I'm going to attempt to draw myself into Encanto. I decide I'm going to place myself in the background of this scene that takes place towards the start of the movie while Mirabella is singing. Now, the harder part was trying to find someone to use as my base. I scanned the movie for a long time, and I eventually decided to use Isabella from this scene, mostly because the perspective is similar and Isabella's hairstyle is similar to mine. So I paste Isabella in and extend her lower body by coloring in a rough skirt shape. Like I mentioned, this is a 3D movie, so my process is going to be very different. At first, I was trying to use filters to make the skin tone lighter, because I'm super pale. <laughs> However, the colors kept looking weird when I was trying to use filters to change things. So I decided to paint over the skin and character entirely. So instead of a draw over, this is going to be a paint over. And honestly, I was totally winging this and kind of had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> While painting over the character, I was trying my best to keep the shadows consistent to where the original placement was, but I changed the colors so that the skin tone matches mine. Also, I decided to open my eyes more instead of being half closed. I think Isabella was transitioning to a different expression when I took the screenshot so her eyes were partially closed. That was another tricky part about the 3D movie. The characters move so much and their expressions are always changing and the poses. Uh, so it's really hard to get the frame timing just right so that I get what I want. I had to try taking screenshots so many times to get it to look kind of just right or how I wanted. Uh, so the character is kind of gonna look ugly for a while before they get better. <laughs> I kept kind of wanting to give up and just say I couldn't do it. But for some reason I just kept going and hoping that if I stuck with it, it would get better. I was trying to trust the process and almost all drawings go through an ugly phase before they get better. Uh, so I was hoping things would get better eventually, <laughs> although I was really nervous they wouldn't. I don't really do much for digital painting, especially when it comes to digital painting with no line art at all. I almost always have some kind of sketch or line art to work with, but because I'm trying to make this look 3D, I can't have any of that. 
Also, Encanto is such a good movie. If you have not seen it, go watch it because it's amazing. My siblings and I love it and have been going around the house singing the songs or quoting lines from the movie ever since we watched it. All of the songs are so good and I love all the characters and their different personalities. It's also just really fun seeing a big family dynamic because I'm the oldest of nine kids, so our family is pretty big and it's fun seeing a big family in a Disney movie. So for this paint over, I would mostly block in the colors and then use the blending tool to blend things out and make things look softer. I actually found I learned a lot by doing this paint over. I learned that I don't like to push my shadows super dark. In a lot of areas, the colors get almost black with how dark the shadows get and I hardly ever make my shadows go that dark. My first instinct was to make the shadows pretty light, but then when I would study how the movie does it, I would find that the shadows would get much darker than I was expecting. So yeah, if you want to learn a bit about lighting and shadow, try studying a 3D movie. It can be really helpful, especially if the movie has really well done lighting like Encanto. So many of the scenes are so beautifully rendered. So the only reason why drawing myself into Encanto kind of works is because in the scene, the background characters are blurred out a bit. So I'll be able to blur myself out. If I had to be super up close and crisp and we could see all the details, it'd be really easy to tell I'm not a 3D model. However, because I'm in the background and I'll be a bit blurred out, it'll be a bit more convincing. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to draw myself into any other 3D movies. I can if the background characters get blurred out, <laughs> but if I ever have to be crisp on screen, I don't know if I'll be able to make it convincing. But I had a lot of fun experimenting with this and trying to make myself look 3D. It was a very different experience. So here's my attempt at drawing myself into Encanto. I don't know if it's 100% convincing, but maybe if someone didn't know I added myself in, maybe they would believe I was always there. <laughs> also, if you have anything you'd like to see me draw myself into, let me know down in the comments. Before we end, I want to say thank you to my super amazing patrons, including Amanda, Ava, and Kay, Belle, Bethany, Harmon, Jacob, Jeff, Lisa, Lu6562, Naru, Puka, Purple Jesse, Rebel Stargirl, Rogelio, Tamalam, Lil Wolfie YT, Rachel, Patrick, Addie, Andre, Anita, Brianna H, Eduardo, Yuri, Elizabeth, Emmy, Gabriella, Hollow Studio, Nymeji XP, Cosmic Dragon, Laughing Raven, Rachel S, Rex and Ree, Robert, Tenchi Art, Trash Oracle, Twin Vani, and Zella May. Thank you so much for your support. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!